Hunters, welcome back to another Evasion Series video. Today we're going over everyone's favorite raw weapon monster, Nargakuga. The Black Panther of Monster Hunter, but not the wholesome version like the MCU hero, the pain in the butt monster. Now he is a little bit of a sneaky boy with a mix of slow and fast attacks, which makes it a little bit harder for you to predict what the attacks are. But he doesn't have a lot of variations or different attacks, so once you learn his tells, he becomes extremely easy to read. He has a series of quick moves, so in general, don't commit to long combos until he's knocked. Narga does have a clear enrage mode when the skin around his eyes glows red. The enrage mode doesn't alter his moves too too much, but the main difference you'll see is that he'll just start attacking faster, so you need to be able to read his tails more quickly. So before we jump into attacks, roars are always the first thing that monsters have. As you may know, Rise iframes are not as ideal to dodge roll the roars. It's become pretty hard unless you're running some evade window. I recommend countering though most monster roars since most weapons now have a counter and it's a big opening for you. And with that, let's grab a wire bug and jump into the regular attacks. So starting with the most basic attack, the bite attack, is just something for him to clear some space in front of him. He kind of likes to take one step forward and bite in front of him. So this is a reminder to you that you don't want to be in front of his face. That's never where you want to be. The best place to be positioned for damage is really beside his head between his wings and his claw attacks. Nothing really hits in that space and it's kind of a safe space for a lot of attacks. Besides that, Narga really only either uses his tail or his wing blades to attack. So let's start with the tail attacks. And for those of you wondering as well, I do have the most annoying tail spin attack time stamped in the description below so be sure to check it out if that's all you're looking for. So let's start with the tail swipe. Very simple attack that comes from one side. He'll rotate his body or it's actually more like a pivot to the side that he's going to attack you with. So as long as you move to the other side, you'll be safe. Essentially anything past the head on the other side is completely safe. You can be safe on the attacking wing side as well, it's just a little bit more of a risk if there's something in the environment that causes some geometry change or him to shift around, you might get hit. And as I mentioned before, between the head and arms like deep in that cubby, you're always safe there. Now he can do this attack from both sides, but he never does it in subsequent fashion. So you just gotta watch out for which way his arms move to react, go to the other side, and then you are clear to damage the head. The next attack is a tail smash. Now regular smash, he kind of just like prowls for a few steps, usually moves to his right or your left, but on occasion he might do the opposite direction. As he's about to attack, he's going to make a large hissing noise and then immediately do a 180 flip and smashes his tail on your position. If he's enraged, he will do the slam twice, so be ready for it. Dodgy this attack is very simple, it's just simply moving in one direction. Don't hesitate, don't go back and forth because he will auto lock on your position so whichever way you're going that tail is going to come right behind you. If you keep running you should be clear, I usually dodge and just roll a little bit just to be clear for sure, you're completely safe once you roll. After the tail smashes, either the first smash in normal mode or the second smash in enraged mode, his tail will be jammed in the floor and that is a great opportunity for you to damage the tail. Next up on the docket we have the tail feather shots. Now this is a classic Nargakuga move, he will spin his tail three times behind his back or above his head and while making this sort of hissing sound. On the third spin, he's going to point them forward and shoot his feathers at you towards the ground. He only shoots once if he's not enraged, he shoots twice if he's enraged. Now these have a pretty decent range so if you're far away, be aware that they can hit you even if you're quite far out, so keep moving. Don't stand still, that's the best way to dodge this, just move in one direction, doesn't matter where you go, as long as you're moving he's gonna miss you. If you can get near his head though, before he does the attack, you're actually pretty safe. He doesn't drop these feathers right below him or like right in front of him, it's definitely a little bit farther out. The only thing to be aware of is that like most of the time, he will jump backwards to create a space before using this attack. The other thing to note about this attack is that the feathers actually stay on the ground for about 5 seconds. So don't walk into them, like as soon as they hit the ground they're going to stay there, they're still going to hurt you, even if you walk over them. Now the final tail attack that I want to talk about here is the spin tail attack. Now this is probably one of the most annoying attacks from Nargakuga has from his tail. It's a high speed, 360 degree spin tail attack. Now he doesn't use this quite often, but it does creep up on you rather quickly. 
it almost always follows up another attack, which is part of the reason why it's so tricky, because it just pops out of nowhere. You think you have a little bit of space to attack, and then suddenly he pops this on you. The tell for this attack is pretty quick, but he does have both an audio and visual cue. The audio one is that he let out like a little mid-tone roar. Not too loud, not too quiet, just something in the middle, kind of a low-tone growl. While he does this, he raises his head and chest and pulls his arm a little bit backwards. Not his whole body, he doesn't move anywhere, but he just pulls the arm back a little bit, kind of like he almost wants to stand up. Once he backs up those arms, you have less than a second until he does the spin. And he always does two spins, the second being in the reverse direction. Now dodging this attack is extremely difficult, and in all honesty, unless you have like evade window 3 on your build at least, it's much easier to just roll away from him, back it up if you can out of the radius, which is also rather big by the way, so you gotta be careful and proactive with this one. If you're really close to him by like the head or the wings, you have no choice but to dodge, you won't be able to get away in time. Dodging is extremely tricky, but there's a spot that has worked for me most consistently is right under the head. Again, I say consistently, but again, it's not 100%. Rolling towards him under his head and chest is generally a safe area. You have to keep in mind that he's going to do two spins in opposite directions. So your roll is going to have to be in opposite directions as well and kind of adjusting to where he ends up. You kind of want to aim to make sure that you're still under his head. If you're kind of in the middle, like not close enough to his head, but also not far enough that you can dodge roll out of it, you're in the toughest spot then. You're going to have to roll into the tail and just attempt that iframes dodge. If you have evade window, again, it makes it more possible because it gives you more invincibility frames. So here's an example of me actually doing this without evade window. But as you can see, it's very hard to nail consistently and I got hit on the second dodge. I couldn't even dodge the second one. I just didn't react fast enough. So you basically need to dodge the tail as you're about to get hit, which is an extremely narrow window. If you are far enough away from him that you can roll backwards out of the attack, do it because that's the easiest way. And then you can actually close in for the second spin. If you can counter that second spin, you can go right ahead and damage it because he's going to end his attack after that second spin and you can get some damage right in there. The one thing I will note, if your weapon has iframes or extra mobility to your counter, you can go ahead and counter the first spin so you can get some damage in. Inside Glaive is great for this because it knocks you into the air and you can attack from above. Dual Blades also has great iframes with aerial mode, although they don't have a lot of mobility. Bow's Dodge Bolt can definitely counter both spins. And Sword and Shield has the Shoigeki, although he still moves on his second spin, so it might not be able to capitalize. But if you're in a bad spot, like in this example here, you can avoid taking damage by using the Shoigeki and you'll just go into the air and dodge the attacks. But there you go, you're not going to get hit. And of course, if any weapon has a shield, guard is always a possibility. I see you Lance Mains laughing. Actually, Lance Mains are probably not even watching this video. They don't need to dodge anything. Perfect. So that's about it for the tail attacks. Let's talk about the pouncing attacks. And this is kind of his main attack combo. He's got two types of pounce attacks that he combines. The first is what I call the blade pounce, where he wants to basically super speed jump at you while swinging one of his arm cut wings towards you. To prepare, he basically pulls back the attacking arm, bends down a little bit, getting ready to leap forward. The arm that's pulled back is the starting arm, and then after that, he's going to alternate which arm that he pounces with. Usually, he does two or three pounces until he gets past you, and then he'll turn around. If he's enraged though, he'll do another jump to turn himself around towards you. This is the indication that the final attack in this combo is coming, which I call the belly flop pounce. Unlike the previous pounces where he attacks you with one blade at a time, this one is a full body pounce and he kind of just likes to throw his belly flop on you. It's a lot slower, it's very easy to read. He will ground both his arms, almost like a swimmer getting ready to dive off the blocks. If you miss that tell, the pounce in the air is very slow. It gives you ample time to dodge. So, speaking of dodging, for the blade pounce, you basically just want to move left or right. Get out of the way, whichever arm is attacking, go to the other arm. That's basically it, or even farther than that. Kind of just get to the side of him. He's just going to go right by you and just prepare for what's coming next. For the belly flop pounce, you have two options, depending on if you want to attack the head or tail. If you want to go for his head, just take two steps backwards from his direct line of sight. Generally speaking, he will distance himself with that last jump before he does the slow pounce. So from wherever that is, taking two steps back is enough space and he'll land right in front of you and then you can proceed to damage the head. 
If you want to hit the tail, you need to dodge to the side out of his line of sight. So he'll leap right past you and then you can hit his tail. My recommendation is to go for the tail. This is one of the better opportunities to hit the tail since he does take a break after this pounce to kind of like reset and catch his breath. You can also counter this move since he's always going to stand still and reset after this attack. Now this last move as well, the belly flop pounce, he will sometimes do it on his own. He doesn't have to follow up the blade attacks with it all the time. He can do it just from standing still where he'll just like wiggle a little bit before jumping or he will reposition around you. So he'll just do a quick jump, try to get around you. He loves doing that and then he'll just go straight into this belly flop pounce attack. So on that note, there's one thing I'd like to note as well here. If he's really close to you from this, like one of his repositioning and he's really close to you before any pounce attack, you can actually roll under Narga as he jumps. There's something up with the jankiness of the hitboxes here, but apparently it works. So you can roll right under his wing as long as you time it while he's airborne and not taking off or just landing. And honestly, that's about it for Narga Kuga, guys. As you can see, not too many complicated attacks, but they are rather quick and they have small cues. So you have to keep an eye out and sort of gain a sixth sense, especially when he's in enraged mode. And that comes from just hunting him and gaining practice. I'll repeat once again my best advice to this. Don't overextend. Don't commit to long combos and keep watching him and moving. He has just as many openings as he does for fast quick attacks. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps many of you that are grinding for those Nargo weapons. His weapons are pretty much the best for raw weapons that we have available, at least until Sunbreak drops. If this has helped, be sure to drop a like guys and consider subscribing for more videos. Until next time hunters, stay safe, be happy, and keep hunting. Sky Sensei is out.